invitation and agreed to come and discuss these issues that are of great importance. And um, they've very nicely for me, they've lined themselves up alphabetically. So as I introduce them, we'll go down the row. Um, it's Katiana Ballantyne, Mary Cassesso, Will Mba, and William Billy Toro. So one of the first rules I'm going to say after this is just we're going to hold all future applause until the end, OK? So we can uh, use the time to, to, to listen. Um, and uh, I'd also like to introduce our panelists who are going to be asking the questions. So a number of people submitted questions, and they're going to uh, be ask, um, asking the candidates the questions. So first, I'd like to introduce Leslie Hergert. Leslie is a longtime Somerville resident. Her father actually was a resident of this building at one point. Uh, her husband, Ralph, was active in, in Somerville for uh, many years. And, and she is the, currently the board, the president of the board of directors of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. And then I would also like to introduce Linda Cornell. Linda is the president and CEO of VNA Senior Living. I've known Linda for 30 years and have gotten to see what an extraordinary leader she has been for providing affordable housing options for older people in Somerville. Uh, first with the very first affordable assisted living model anyway, anybody knows about. Um, and now when the Little Sisters of the Poor were no longer able to keep this community open, uh, she stepped in and, and took over. And now we have 100, 110 um, apartments and units uh, for low and middle income elders in Somerville. Um, it's technically called a rest home. Uh, it's a beautiful uh, community. If you haven't uh, visited, take a tour. <laughs> So thank you, Linda. <laughs> so um, before we uh, uh, hear from the candidates, I'd like to just take a minute to outline uh, some of the rules of the, of the forum. Um, so we're going to start with each candidate having the opportunity to give an opening statement of no more than five minutes. Um, Leslie and Linda uh, will then be asking a series of questions. They were compiled beforehand by, um, with suggestions from members of the community. Uh, and each candidate will have two minutes to respond to each question. And um, we do ask the candidates to um, respect the time limits. And Gina up front here has a yellow card, which she will show you when you've got 30 seconds left, <laughs> and a red card, which she'll show you when, you, uh, when time is out. And then the hook. <laughs> yes. That's, uh, those colors, are, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a soccer, youth soccer referee, and those colors are very familiar to me. So. Um, and then each candidate will have uh, five minutes for a closing statement. And I just want to remind the candidates this is a forum, not a debate. Um, so please address the audience uh, both um, in here and uh, streaming in on Somerville Community Access Television. Um, so with, uh, with the last thing I'm going to say is that uh, I appreciate everybody wearing masks here. The candidates, when you're speaking, you may remove your mask. Um, and we ask everybody to keep the mask on at other times. And with that, let me introduce, um, hand it over to Linda and Leslie. Do you want to, did you want to say something? No, that's fine. Um, I, I did want to say something. Oh, no, go right ahead. I think Paul told you a little bit about the VNA, and we're in their facility. I want to make sure that for those of you who don't know, know a little bit about Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Um, we're a longtime local nonprofit here in Somerville, but we serve both Cambridge and Somerville. And we're dedicated to helping older neighbors maintain independence and well being in the setting of their choice. We provide information services and advocacy work, and we also provide free advice and guidance on challenges of aging caregiving, and disability. And our disability services are open to people under the age of 60. So call us. So now we'll let Linda start with the questions. So I think that um, just along those lines, I, I do want to encourage everyone here, you're my eyes and ears out in the community to let people know that this, this, these units and this facility is open and we have we do have availability and th anyone that you know that might need just a little extra help with like a warm loving place to live please send them our way 
It's such an honor and privilege to have all four candidates. It's been how many years? 20 some? 20 some years that you, you all get the privilege of electing your next mayor. And of course, the mayor of all mayors is here, <laughs> Jean Bro. <laughs> Jean is the gold standard for mayors. Thank you, Jean. And Jean was on the board here at the Little Sisters for how many years? 20 years. And I don't think Lowell Street would have been built without Jean Broom, and that was our first building. We now have over 300 apartments and units for people who just need a little extra help. So. My first question, oh, we, well, first of all, we were gonna give everyone five minutes, but I do want you to think about, uh, during that five minutes, to talk a little bit about how, what are the issues that you see facing the seniors of Somerville? So let's start with uh, Katiana. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Katiana Ballantyne, and I'm running for summer, uh, mayor of Somerville. Thank you so much for having me here today. Uh, thank you, Leslie, Linda, and Paul, and certainly all of you who are here today. I also, you know, as friends and neighbors uh, for nearly three decades here in Somerville. When I, I'm very optimistic about Somerville. I'm optimistic about many of the things that we've worked on over the last decade. We've made a lot of progress. There's so much more to be done. When I announced I was running for mayor, I said then that I thought our next mayor needs to have three key qualities. She needs to embody the cultures and values of Somerville. She needs to have an inclusive leadership style and she needs to have the skills and experience to be our next chief executive. And I believe I best bring those three key qualities to the position of mayor. A little bit about me. I was born and orphaned in Greece. I was adopted there by a Scottish father, hence the name Ballantyne, and a Czech German mother, so hence the name Katiana. We're a family of immigrants and we immigrated to the United States when I was four. I learned then that sometimes people are afraid of differences. It could be your accent, it could be the foods, or it could simply be your culture. I was sometimes ridiculed and excluded because of my differences. So I've always learned to be sure to be inclusive of everyone. I was the first in my family to go to college I worked two jobs, uh, took out loans to get a bachelor's and a master's degree. I've been working for about 30 years. I started off in business and international supply chain management. And then after about a dozen years, I primarily done nonprofit work and in Boston. I worked for an affordable housing developer and I worked also to find jobs for people in workforce development. We get them the housing, now we wanted to connect them to jobs and living wage jobs and skills training. I worked with community-based organizations to create green economy jobs and energy efficiency, giving people uh, the opportunity to start their own businesses. And I was seven and, uh, five years executive director of a violence prevention nonprofit for at-risk girls. My vision for Somerville is a vision that is inclusive, equitable, where we can all thrive together. I wanna continue working on the issues of affordability, of transportation, of mobility, making it safe for all users here in Somerville, and equity to make our city better. And I hope I can earn your support today. Thank you. sure it's that because yeah okay thank you 
Thanks for the help. <laughs> so I'm Mary Cassesso. I love the city of Somerville. I grew up in Somerville and East Somerville, and I love to tell my story. My mother was a single mother, and she had four children, and we lived in a five-room apartment that my grandmother owned. So from a young child, I realized the importance of affordable housing. But what I realized even more is the commitment that my extended family, my mother, my aunts, and my grandmother made to building a better and stronger community, like so many of you here today, because I got a chance to talk to you, and you're all active in the community and all committed to making it a stronger neighborhood. So as a child, whether it was working for better benefits and wages for farm workers by protesting um, at supermarkets, iceberg lettuce and grapes, or my grandmother stopping the bulldozer for the construction of I-93, um, and forming a new East Somerville Health Center, we were active in the community. So it was that work, coupled with my lived experiences, that drove my commitment to always being value-driven, inclusivity, welcoming, respect, and kindness. I was the first in my family to attend college and graduate school, and I'm proud to say after I did, and while I was second youngest, my mom went back to school, as did my sister and everyone else in the family, but education changed my life. So I mentioned affordable housing, I mentioned education. I studied public administration in graduate school because I was committed then to always working in the city. I've worked since I was 14 years old. I want to talk a tad about my experience because it's unparalleled in management and executive experience. One of my first full-time jobs was working in the city of Somerville for Jean Broom, who's here today, and yes, mayor of all mayors. Um, I ran the 60-plus health center in the Council on Aging, and we forged a strong partnership back then with Somerville Cambridge Elder Services, and that was John O'Neill at the time. And that partnership, I think, prevails today and includes even more because we've always worked with Linda, but partnerships and working together leverages, and it makes sure that there is a continuum of care and service, not holes. And while I say that's the goal, I know there's some work we need to do, especially for older adults in the city of Somerville. I'll quickly say I did transformational work as the uh, chief financial person in the city of Somerville. And the restructuring that I accomplished at City Auditor is the model that's used in the city of Somerville today. We created a separate purchasing, personnel, and IT department. Those services were all in my position, and it was the greatest bottleneck in the city, and the books were three years behind. As I say, that model is still working, and we developed the first program plan budget. Very quickly, as I committed to continuing in government, I worked for Michael Dukakis, who is a friend today, in employment and training and affordable housing. I was an administrative dean at the Harvard School of Dental Medicine with the charge to restore financial stability at the school. And I went back to government working for Deval Patrick in Health and Human Services, which is literally the safety net services, veterans, elder affairs, all of the children, youth, and family services. And finally, my most recent job that I loved dearly was working at the Cambridge Health Alliance. And I partnered closely with Linda at the VNA and um, all of the nonprofit agencies. I worked not just for the city of Somerville and community, but all the Metro North areas where we formed strong regional partnerships. I mentioned I love this city. I would be privileged to serve as the mayor, and I would tap these years of experiences and partnerships to bring to bear to make us a strong Somerville. Thank you very much. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I don't think it's, okay. Can you hear me okay now? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Linda. Um, So my name is Will Mba. I am one of the city councilor at large for the city of Somerville and also a candidate for mayor. 
am running for mayor of Somerville because for too long, the needs of the most marginalized in our community have been ignored. Government is not working for them. And because it is way too hard for people to live and raise their families here. And I want to be very clear, one of the most overlooked and marginalized community groups in the city here are our seniors. I know exactly how this feels. As an immigrant from Cameroon, I know what it's like to feel like you're working hard but barely getting by. My parents both died when I was a young boy, and I was raised by my family members and in a foster home. In 2010, I was lucky enough to receive a visa to come to the United States and work. I quickly fell in love with this city. It's, uh, it's one of those unique communities that I don't want to live anywhere else. The humanity in this community is overwhelming. Somebody mentioned Mayor Emeritus Jean Brun. This is the first person also that I met in this community who even helped me to purchase my first car. That is him sitting right there. <laughs> so this led to me working with organizations like East Somerville Main Street, which board of directors I served on. But when I came here, I saw that our government did not always work for you when you need it most. I experienced this firsthand when I applied for mass health and I was denied. So many summer these seniors have had similar experience. And I know what is, it is like not to be listened to. I've dedicated my time on the city council fighting for our seniors and ens ensuring that the issues that impact them are not overlooked. There has been progress on some of these issues. Don't get me wrong, but it has not happened quick enough. That's why I'm running for mayor, to accelerate our community's progress on these issues and change the conversation. I have a track record that demonstrates what we can achieve if I'm elected mayor. On the city council, I led the effort to create the Office of Housing Stability because I know what it feels like not to know where you're going to live. I led the fight to ban racial profiling and create the Civilian Oversight Board because I knew it was a step towards justice. This is the same very community that was racially profiled in this very city. And I've been there to tackle problems big and small whenever a neighbor has needed someone to fight for them. Right now, the most marginalized in the city do not have a seat at the table, but developers and special interests. And I promise you, if I'm elected mayor, I'm going to change that. Thank you for the opportunity, and I look forward to speaking with you, answering your questions, but most importantly, listening to you. I remember in the beginning, Linda asked, what are the, you know, uh, some of the things during our introduction that we think you know, uh, uh, are facing our senior. And I sat for a moment, I told myself that we can have all these policies and programs, but they don't create connections. So we need to start to be creative on how to build relationship you know, with our senior. Nobody wants to live in the neighborhood for 20 years without knowing who their neighbor is. If something happens, that is the person you should be able to rely on. If you're my neighbor, and the, your light goes off, and I, you know, I can say, hey, Linda, come, come over here. You know, when, and, and when the, your light comes back, you can go back home. But I don't see that happening in this community. We need to do more. Thank you for the opportunity. How you doing? What? Can everyone hear me okay? My name is Billy Toro. I'm a son of uh, Italian immigrants who came here from Italy. My mother and father, when they came from Italy, they um, found jobs and started to work. They took assimilation classes to become American citizens. Then my mother and father, they sat down and raised a family. Then became the World War II. My father joined the American Army. He became a sergeant in Sergeant Patton's uh, tank corps, and he was one of the brave gentlemen, brave men and women that uh, stormed Normandy. After the war, he came back to Massachusetts into Somerville and he went to the auto body business because he was infatuated with machinery and, and automobiles and cars because of the tank corps. He raised a family over here. Myself, uh, I'm married. My, my, um, my wife is Marissa. She's of Brazilian descent. She's an immigrant. We immigrated here. I have two Italians, uh, a son and daughter from my first marriage. And I have a stepson who's Brazilian descent. With uh, He just gave me a, a new... Uh, step grandson as well. My daughter uh, just gave me another granddaughter who's of Indian descent. And my son has three 
that stepkids, which now I have three Afro-American st stepchildren. So I'm very lucky, man. My family's growing every day. Um, I've been the publisher of the Somerville News Weekly for the longest time. Back in 2004, I was a publisher of the Somerville News. Then after the Somerville News, I became the publisher of Boston News Group, Modern Cop Magazine. And now I'm the publisher of uh, Somerville, New Somerville Medford News Weekly. And I, I'm, I distribute it free amongst the community. It's a public outreach. I've been doing it for almost 20 years. I, um, I've been involved with seniors throughout the city. I've seen them neglected. I've seen them, you know, they deserve a lot more. I've been throwing events for them for the past 20 years. I've been taking care of my veterans and uh, throwing events for them for the past 20 years, with such as veteran cruises, along with the good people of the Winter Hill Young Club for both of them. Uh, I'm not a politician. Never was a politician. When I was doing all this for the past 20 years, I never thought I'd be sitting here today running for mayor. But I saw the direction the city was going, and I got disappointed. The city let the residents of Somerville down. I believe in the police. I believe in the fire department. I actually want to increase both of their budgets. With It's a, it's a, it's a vehicle called the, um, um, uh, it's a vehicle called the uh, Hub Initiative. They're using it in Chelsea right now with the, with the Chelsea police. And it's, it's similar if uh, the police come to a, 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 a situation with either a drunken person, addicted person, uh, something happened, there was a mental illness. Instead of arresting them, putting them in jail, letting them go to court, get a criminal record, ruin their lives, ruin their family, the Hub Initiative takes them a different way. We sit with them. We do programs with them. We meet once a week with special managers of them. And we put them on the path to the right path of living and uh, back to the society. So I plan on bringing the Hub Initiative into the city. I believe in affordable housing. I believe in parking and our businesses. Our businesses need parking. Parking's been taken away throughout the city. You know, I know they took away both sides of Somerville Avenue. They increased the sidewalks to 25 feet each, which eliminated over 200 parking spaces on both sides. How are the people going to bring the groceries in, hospital visits, family visits? How the business is going to survive? How, like, there's some of the computer on, um, on uh, some of the lab. How does someone go to drop off the computer to be fixed? Where does he park? There's no loading zones, no handicap zones, nothing. So I want to bring all, the, I want to bring all that back to the city. I want to bring every bit of it back. I'm big on the homeless. I've been helping the homeless for the past 15, 20 years, too. I've noticed I've been going around. Uh, I just saw a colony of homeless people under the McGrath Highway Bridge. They're living in 40-foot tubes under the bridge. These are homeless veterans, 40-foot tubes, because the city has nothing to offer these people. And I, I bring them dinners. I bring them Thanksgiving dinners. I bring them nightly dinners. I come out in the rain. I come out in the snow. I've been doing it for 20 years. Like I said, it's, I'm not a politician. I was never looking for anything, no, no notoriety, anything. I just trying to do the right thing. But enough's enough. I saw the direction the city was going. City council was sitting on their hands. I don't believe in safe injection sites at all. I'm totally against it. They should keep it at the Mass General Hospital in their own facility. It shouldn't become in our neighborhoods. And I, I will quickly oppose that and shut them down when I become mayor. But I'm asking for your vote to become mayor of the city of Somerville. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, everybody stayed within their time frame. Excellent. <laughs> So uh, the first, uh, I'm going to be speaking about the first topic, and that is something that I know very well, and that has to do with uh, affordable senior housing, affordable and dignified senior housing. Uh, these are questions that were emailed, uh, actually several people emailed and sent in questions uh, Julie, uh, Joe, uh, uh, they want to know how would you ensure that Somerville seniors can continue to live in this town, which is being heavily developed, and stay in their homes and or find affordable housing along those lines. Describe how you as mayor would improve the conditions for seniors and disabled in the housing authority. That was a, uh, in public housing in Somerville. That was a very specific question. They want to talk hear about your ideas about protections in the condo conversion process. And what are the incentives to keep uh, two and four family housing 
uh, units from going to single housing units. Katiana, do you want to start? Yes, thank you. Um, I might have to go back and ask you on some of those. <laughs> so uh, I want to say that I am totally supportive of affordable housing. I'm the only candidate that has worked for an affordable housing developer that creates affordable housing and at the same time sat on the board and volunteered a decade of my time at Somerville Community Corporation, which develops affordable housing. So uh, I have uh, been supportive. I have done everything possible for um, creating more, and I would use every tool possible. I was supportive of the condo conversion and the, the um, uh, provisions that we made uh, for relocation. If someone, uh, an elder or a person with disabilities needed to, to move out, and um, I would like to say an example of the work that I did is over at Clarendon Hill Public Housing. I had a two-year process where I hosted 11 community meetings to rebuild uh, the 216 units there and then create another 80 affordable housing units that houses not only families but also seniors over there and veterans over there. And uh, in that process, which was involve the state, at the end of the day, uh, you have three-story public housing units, which are going to be five, seven, and nine stories of housing. And we had five ZBA meetings with not one person speaking against the project. And I believe that that demonstrates how I manage the process in an inclusive way uh, to get new housing and also new housing for seniors. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, affordable housing has been the cornerstone of my commitment in the community. Besides working for our Governor Dukakis, for 30 years now, I've sat on the Somerville Affordable Housing Trust Fund. There's no issue that is more crucial to health and well-being than housing and that's the reason it's been such a priority and as i said it was a huge factor in my life back when i grew up in somerville families were able to help folks out by giving them a unit in a home they purchased for a very affordable rate well the houses in east somerville where i grew up are now costing over a million dollars and they're not in great condition and so we do need proactive policies to keep housing affordable. Also, elders want to age in place. Older adults feel strongly that they want to be in their community. I want to build incentives in so that folks like my mom, who lives in Somerville, can stay in her, in her house and still have opportunities to make affordable changes. For instance, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yes. that, that's, okay, that, that's okay, I'll go on. Um, and, and, and I will say that um, the condo conversion protections are also helpful because we were losing a lot of affordable units um, because people were developing them and those markets are gone forever. So through additional money, we should have more assistance for home ownership more programs for elders in their unit and grants for investments. And if they're keeping units affordable for family or for people who've become their family, let's help them. People might have an asset that's worth a lot, but they don't have cash and they can't live. And it's our job to provide assistance to make that work for them. Hello, yeah, thank you, Linda. Uh, for that question, I guess we need to redefine the problem again. Like, what is the problem we are talking about, you know, in terms of talking about affordability for seniors? It's pretty clear they are on fixed income and the city is fast changing. So that is the problem. So how do we get creative, you know, to improve on our tax structure so that we can help these people stay in their homes? How do we 
be creative to exempt some of them, whether it's true utility rebate, or even at a certain age, <laughs> you should not even be paying tax because this is like, we gotta get creative. I know some of these tools will probably require state approval, but we have to, you know, go beyond that comfort zone about, you know, picking uh, little things to say we are helping our seniors. So we need to be broad and we need to be bold because this city is changing. And these are folks that have lived here all their lives. They made this community what it is. And then now, before you know it, you know, they, they are getting priced out you know, under our own very, <laughs> you know, face. I just think it's disrespectful, you know, as a government. Government can be a force for good. And this is the time that we need to rethink, reimagine how government works as far as seniors are concerned in our community. Thank you. I believe we do need a lot of affordable housing, but let's face it, our seniors are getting driven out of some of them. They're getting driven out of some of them for high taxes, high extended water bills, sewer bills. It's not right. You know, when we built Assembly Row, that was supposed to have been some of those cash cow. All the taxes were supposed to come from that. But instead, the elected officials gave them tax breaks, gave them breaks from giving them affordable housing units away for a lot of percentages from, I think it went from 16 to 12 percent. It's ridiculous. That was supposed to have been a cushion that should have absorbed all the taxes so our seniors and homeowners and property owners wouldn't have to absorb it on their own. I don't believe in that. I'm the only candidate that doesn't want the, the transfer tax where you have to give 2% of your property away. You want to hand that house down to your kids, your grandkids or whatnot, even if you want to sell it. I don't think the city should put their hands in your pocket and get 2% of that on a transfer tax. I don't believe in a first right of refusal as well. The reason being is you go to sell that house because you want to move on, you're elder, you have a cash buyer right in front of you. When you have the, uh, the first right of refusal, you have to give three of your prior tenants, two existing one, and you have to send a certified letter out to one that used to live there 10 years ago. Hey, you all got first right of refusal to buy my house. You each got six months to do it. So one, the first tenant, six months, go does his due diligence, can't do it. The second one, try six months of due diligence, can't do it, get a loan or anything. The third one, hey, you got to call him up, send him a certified letter. Hey, you used to live here 15 years ago. He goes, you know, you still have first or refusal. By then, your cash buyer is gone. That's how our seniors are being affected. They're losing their homes and they're losing everything. I will bring that back. Turn it over to Leslie. <laughs> Thanks. And I think this time we'll start at the other end with Billy, so he's not always last. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask a question about summer vision. Uh, the city has developed a strategic plan with goals to reach by 2040, uh, and it's called summer vision. That plan originally didn't include any section specifically about seniors. Uh, it's since been amended and with slight variations, uh, little things fit in, but I think it still is criticized for not including enough and the lack of focus. So my question for you is, how would you ensure that elders are seen as an important constituency in the future and what issues, goals, and or actions would you address or include? And I would ask you to say what you think are the highest priority issues to include in that plan for seniors? I think most of the problem the seniors have is the mobility. You know, I think it's raining outside today. I don't see anyone come here on bicycle. I think most of us came by automobiles. I don't believe in making some of automobile, automobile free like some of my opponents, but I believe we should increase the, the parking for the seniors. They need more mobility. You know, you know, it, this isn't Washington, D.C., it isn't Canada, it isn't Montreal, it, and it's not France, where you have these elaborate bus systems, a subway system, you could go down the subway, have lunch down there, heated and air conditioned. This is some of them. We're not up to that yet. We need the automobiles. We have to make it more easier for our seniors to get around. We have to provide them more services, give them more activities. They deserve more. They should have never been left out of summer vision. They should have never. That should have been their top priority. As mayor, I'm going to make sure the seniors and the veterans will be my top priority. Thank you. 
Thank you, Leslie, uh, for that question. I want to say I was lucky enough to sit in the Committee of uh, Housing and Community Development where they almost pushed for this uh, summer vision to be voted and approved quickly before we went on recess. And I'm grateful for the chair of that committee. I saw her here, uh, Councillor Strezzo. I don't know, maybe she left. But it's, we put our feet to the ground because we're like, there's no way you cannot move this thing forward. Seniors are supposed to be front and center of our issues and you haven't properly addressed it. And besides, we are just coming from a pandemic. You have to even address, like, go back, redefine, like, what, what are the issues that this pandemic has caused us in this community? And so how can we take stock back and then now recalibrate ourselves and not just move ahead as if there was no pandemic? So that is, uh, and so what am, I, what am I supposed to say about that? We need to see, you know, like, free public transit for our seniors. This is, like, addressed, uh, you know, mobility concern. As seniors need high-speed internet, we've seen the, 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 the necessity for all this. You know, th There's so much that we can do, but just in the interest of time, I just want to say, yes, this is a new uh, uh, pathway, and this is supposed, we are, summer vision is supposed to set the pace for the next 20, 30 years, and there was no way it, was, it, was, uh, it had to pass us by without addressing like, senior concerns. So it is still stuck in committee, and we will be integrating all the issues that you know we are talking about. And like I said, also, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the, the solutions. But I'm also here to listen, to take in stock so that we can incorporate those things as we move ahead. This is a community export e effort. I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm a subject matter expert because I need your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie. 33,000, just over 33,000 is the median household income for elders in Somerville. So I, I want to say the things quickly because there's a lot we need to be doing, should be doing, and have not. On the transportation front, oftentimes I see um, older adults waiting for hours at a bus stop or at a store or at a hospital appointment because they're waiting for the ride. And that should not happen. And we know SCES uh, did a regional grant. When we did a similar one when I was at CHA with the Metropolitan Area Partnership to get taxi cabs so it could be more convenient. As well, we know healthcare accessibility is a significant issue. And in particular, a program as successful as the PACE program, which is all inclusive, aging in place, the parameters are very restrictive. I talked about what the median income is. Most people still would not fall within the range. We need to expand a program like PACE. We need to expand healthcare opportunities for older adults um, by increasing the income guidelines. And a program like that, which is one-stop shopping, whether it's your dental, your physical therapy, your drugs, it's there in the one site. We need more of those programs. Council on Aging in Somerville, when Jean Broom was mayor, did a lot of services. We need to refresh. We need to do more. Workforce, lastly, we need to pay people better working in facilities like, like Linda's, and we need to take advantage of um, uh, adults that want to, older adults that want to do volunteer work in the community and have so much to offer. Thank you. Um, I support um, making amendments and changes to the summer vision. When the summer vision was proposed uh, and we were going sort of the evaluation process back in March of 2020, I will say there were a few of you in the audience here, Suzanne, Alan, and Rosemary, that sent an email and said, you know, we want to propose some changes to the summer vision. So I totally agreed with them, and we submitted them. They were about making the sidewalks more uh, accessible and uh, bus stops more accessible and crosswalks and retiming Davis Square so that you just even figured out the signaling that eight more people could cross the street. We talked about uh, amending uh, safe routes to parks and uh, aiming for universal design 
and having a central information source and changing the logo, the slogan for Somerville. So live, work, and raise a family, and how about stay in and age in place? We can add that component to it. So it shows the entire sort of continuum of all the people uh, and all the, the users of our public assets here. So uh, I put those amendments in. The administration said that uh, they were going to consider them. Uh, and the planning board, it is the planning board, just so we understand the process, it's the planning board who approves this. But the, the, the mayor's office said, city council, we want you to also approve it. It doesn't, that doesn't mean it goes into place, but I will not support it until the senior portions uh, uh, and the amendment changes that I had suggested, uh, and I should say the community residents had suggested. And so um, what are the essential things is that we have to make sure that we're enhancing the dignity of people growing here, wellness activities, education, socialization, work, transportation. Thank you. Thank you. So the, all of you talked quite a bit about some of the issues around um, transportation. Um, and uh, we've also talked a lot about seniors in particular, but Somerville needs to be an integrated community where an intergenerational community. And I'd like to hear a little bit more specifics about what you would do to address those issues of making this a not a separate community where we have seniors and young people and children, but more of an intergenerational. Um, and someone mentioned, uh, touched on the fact that just a basic situation where there's no seating or shelters at the bus stops, yet we're trying to be transportation friendly. Um, escorts to doctors, if we want people to stay in their homes, we need to not only provide them, but we have to pay for that. Uh, so if you could talk a little bit how you would balance the needs of elders, seniors, and people with disabilities. And this is a, something that came directly from the audience. And how you would address that specifically. Billy, why? Well, like I said, the seniors are going to be my top priorities, the seniors and the veterans. You deserve it. You deserve the very best. I'd like to increase the budget and help on the seniors. I want to do everything I can. I want to and worry. I want to take care of their transportation. Transportation should be free. should be free for all of them. You should have adequate transportation. You shouldn't be waiting in the bus stop for an hour. You shouldn't be waiting out in the rain. You shouldn't be waiting in the bus lane or anything like that. You should have transportation when you need it. I want to build senior centers across the city where they can come and have activities together, go out and enjoy themselves. Let's face it, for the last two years, they've been cooped up in their apartments, cooped up in their apartments. They couldn't go to their, um, uh, their common areas were all roped up with crime table looked like. They were cooped up in their apartments like, like they were just stuck in there. I want to get them out. I want to get them accessible to go anywhere they want to go within this city, and especially the senior centers throughout and have activities through it. That's why for the past 20 years, I've been providing all of that at the Winter Hill Yacht Club. I've been providing transportation for them all for 20 years, transportation, entertainment, and a good time. And I consider the Winter Hill Yacht Club is one of our senior centers right now, but we're all volunteers doing it for free. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Uh, for that question, and uh, thank you, Billy, for saying that you know public transportation you know should be free. That is really remarkable because it's something that we need uh, in this community, and everybody will benefit. I want to say, uh, Linda, that question also. I need to still refresh everybody that if you're a person with disability in this community, and you're a senior, you're almost invisible, which is really sad. You know, so it's good that we are having this conversation in broad light. And your job, even after this, is to hold us accountable, whoever becomes mayor. It's not just a one-off debate, and then we come and pontificate and then leave. Like I said, policies and programs don't create connections. So this, about, uh, uh, this is about shared street, eco-mobility, making sure that 
everybody is on board because we need to redefine the city we want. The profile of the city is changing. You know, we need to accept that. I know people don't love change, but we need to embrace that because how do we, you know, have this integrated approach where seniors can also feel like they're also part of the community and not just also like cooped somewhere. And so it's all about making sure that we have like curb cuts, we have streets that are, are, are accessible for seniors and, and, and people with disabilities. They can get out for the outdoors and actually interact and enjoy life like everybody else. So we will need every tool in the toolbox to be able to like bring everybody together and redesign the city that we want. So this is not something that is going to happen overnight, but it's something that once we start this conversation, it means that we are ready to change <laughs> the, the direction that we are going as a community. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. 39% um, of older adults in Somerville live alone. Social isolation, and we saw it the most during the pandemic, has been so significant. And we know as a community, we have always had insufficient mental health and substance use treatment services because reimbursement levels for those services are low, just like the pay rates for people that work with older adults are too low and the benefits not sufficient. So we need to start there always. Um, related to escort services, yes, I think there are opportunities in high school internship programs and even college programs to get academic credit for folks who want to work with older adults. SCEC, Paul has a program. We had one when I was at Cambridge Health Alliance that um, paid scholarship support for people committed to working with elders and carved out a career track and path to make it more attractive. We need navigators to help. Also related to people with disabilities, I started a program at Cambridge Health Alliance for people that were blind or near blind to put them to work in healthcare. They were smart people that no one would give them a chance. So we have to get out of our comfort zone and be completely inclusive. And um, uh, finally, navigation services, and I see the card, and so I will thank everyone. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. I know we can build an even better and stronger community through inclusion, collaboration, and genuinely caring about our neighbors. Intergenerational. I live in an intergenerational household. We're a family of five. My 90-year-old dad lives with us. He uh, has early onset uh, dementia. Um, he uh, welcomes the interaction even uh, within our neighborhood. He meets with our neighbors, the kids. Uh, we have the block parties. Uh, so many people now, and including us, we have a dog. And uh, we just, you know, uh, the dog sits by my father's feet. He just like gravitated right towards him. And as though almost he understood that my father needed a little bit more attention. It, it was quite amazing to see. But I look at this and we have lots of neighbors who are seniors that live in our neighborhoods. So um, I think it all starts with us. You know, we say we have these block parties and that's wonderful, but we include everybody. It's just like, we have this chain. And even when it's the winter time, we have this chain and we call people. Do you, who's gonna do which person's uh, sidewalk? So um, that intergenerational approach that's within you know, our own families where we're helping, we just need to expand uh, the boundaries. We could set up um, you know, competitions to make sure you know, neighborhood on neighborhood. Do you know all the neighbors that are seniors that live in your, your neighborhood? Check in with them. I will say in the neighborhood of like a four block area, that's what we did over the, the pandemic. We did that and we also uh, collected foods and supplies for many of our neighbors who lived over in Clarendon Hill or in the public housing and some of the seniors. And we did that once a month and people just dropped things off at my house. But it's 
it's spreading out and we can do it. Thank you. And I will turn it back over to Leslie. <laughs> So we often, <clears throat> we often talk about seniors as if they're only a needy group. Um, and as you, can, <laughs> as you can see from the people in this room, <laughs> there are a lot of wide ranging uh, abilities and contributions. So I'd like you to think about that, how you would, what you would do to uh, engage seniors as an asset to the community. And also think about, this is a little out of left field, um, think about yourself as you age and what you would hope to find here in the city that would make you stay and encourage you to get involved in the city as you get older. Oh, uh, let's start, go back to Katiana. Uh, thank you uh, for the question. That's a, a great one. I've learned so much from all of you, historic preservation, like all of, you know, as being a city councilor for seven and a half years, I'm not the subject matter expert on anything, whether it's been land use, whether it's been um, um, uh, the, the education systems. I've learned so much. So we learn from one another. We just have to make sure that we're, we're talking to one another. Uh, I'm Greek, as I said, I was adopted. Uh, I'm happy about my, and proud of my cultural heritage. Uh, my mother learned how to Greek cook, but um, uh, not as well as some of my neighbors who were Greek. And so they have brought my kids in and many of the, our, our neighbors to teach uh, my girls how to cook uh, Greek. I mean, it's a simple thing, but it just reminds them they can go two blocks over that there are neighbors there to think outside of the, the boundaries uh, that they're in. Um, so, you know, how would I uh, engage and what would cause me to stay in the city? It's the relationships. I've lived in Somerville for 27 years. I'm fortunate that, you know, my husband and I, you know, realized in uh, 27 years ago that this was a, an amazing place to be, but it's the relationships. Um, it's the uh, community which has helped us to stay. And that is certainly um, what I would want to make sure um, happens for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So I am an older adult myself <laughs> and I'm running for mayor. <laughs> and my mother takes care of her great granddaughter. And so neighborhoods in Somerville were always like that growing up. You had intergenerational families. No one locked their doors. You went up and downstairs in three family homes. And now we work to create that because that's what we loved about Somerville those neighborhoods. Um, my grandmother also was a volunteer in the Somerville school system, and she volunteered until she was in her 90s. And yes, in the audience, I talked to a Davis Now person, Historical Society, and many of you have talked about the work that you're doing in the community, because I agree with Will, we don't want to become invisible. We have a lot to offer, a lot to young, a lot to colleagues, and it helps with social isolation. So I encourage um, all, perhaps even an office of volunteerism where opportunities would become clear to everyone. Um, and, and no such thing as getting too old to contribute. Um, kids learn so much from older um, adults. And I like to think of myself in that generation. We have a President Biden, we have Nancy Pelosi, we have a whole entourage of leaders and leaders in this room. It doesn't have to be nationwide, but we all have contributions to make. And we will continue to have a volunteerism department. When I was canvassing, one woman said to me, I want to still be involved at Laura's house, Laura's here, in the community. What are some options? So we'll make those options. We'll have volunteerism committee. Uh, thank you for that question. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a great one. And just like, thank you, Mary, you know, for building even on my, my introduction. I think uh, 
this is like something that I've been like thinking about once it comes to our seniors. One of the places where we need to continue to invest is fully fund and expand our council on aging. That is something that they are really doing a lot of work. And so sometimes this is how we, you know, uh, help the seniors is through the council on aging if you don't know so if you don't see us a lot it doesn't mean we're not doing anything but i want to be here with you guys so uh also i want to say one of my most fascinating conversations and that i can remember are with seniors no disrespect to mayor emeritus jean brun but i've enjoyed my conversation with you a lot you know and so it's very memorable and, and i can mention another guy like uh enoch Woodhouse, like this is like people in their 90s. So I really cherish that. And I've said it a lot of times that I like to spend time with people over 75 and under five. You know, this is, this is like, this are the, the most remarkable human beings. You know, they speak freely, they tell you how they think because they, like, they, they, they're just cool. So um, also I think, you know, like, and I was really, proud to be able to like walk through the council on aging to distribute food during the pandemic i thought that was very rewarding i saw when i age i want to be able to have food you know somebody that can be, be able to relate with me talk with me chat with me and uh also i think that i also need to see a lot of outreach for non-english you know speakers you know this is something that we need to continue to do we are not perfect but it's good to continue to make progress there's always room for improvement so this is something that I, I would love to. Even a community center too would be great. Thank you. Hi, one, one of the biggest problems seniors have, they're lucky enough to haven't been driven out yet, is they're in the house. How are they gonna maintain it? Who's gonna shovel for them? Who's gonna carry their groceries up? Who's gonna clean the windows? Who's gonna cut the grass? I plan on bringing the hand program into some of them. The hand program is we have a, 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 a team of, um, Carpenters, electricians, kids, cut grass, painters, just as simple as carrying groceries up, going to get your medication, give you a ride to the doctors, give you a ride here, give you a ride there. I believe in all that. I, and I want to bring the hand program into Somerville to help our seniors to enjoy the quality of their, their lives in their own homes. I also brought a program to Somerville, it's the food drive that I've been doing for the past year. And um, I was every week I was giving away five, 500 boxes. 535 35 pound boxes of food and I was distributing them through the community and I would have the food drive every Saturday from 12 to 2 and then after that we'd load up U-Haul trucks and my two Hummers we'd load it up drive them across the city distribute them through our senior homes throughout the city to make sure they were well fed I did that all on my own before I even thought of running for mayor and I continue going to keep doing that and I, the seniors deserve the best the quality of life is number one if they, if they, I don't want them to be scared to say, I have to go to a nursing home. I, don't, I have to go to a rest home. I want them to be all independent, live in their own home, pick up the phone, call me. I'll have an open door policy. We'll have the hand program. You need someone to cut the grass, we'll send someone there. You need someone to mow the lawn or paint the house, we'll send someone there. It's no looking for it, no SOS. You call me, you call my staff, it'll get done, I promise. Thank you. I think we could... <clears throat> Give everybody a round of applause now because <laughs> and I want to thank you all not only for keeping to the time frames, which were pretty strict, so thank you for that, but also for the fact that you all answered our questions directly instead of going off. So I'm very optimistic about the future of the city and the mayoral election. Thank you. So we're going to have Paul come up. Oh, oh, he, oh right. Sorry. I thought you were going to We got it. Yeah, <laughs> we're still together. I know. We so, lost track. Yeah. Well, I think uh, for, I want to reiterate what Leslie said. And uh, I think that Somerville has a good future ahead of it. And we're very fortunate to have four excellent candidates running for that position. Um, so we would like to invite each of you now to give a closing statement and, and just tell us a little bit about you and you what you're going to do as mayor.
Thank you. Thank you so much for for having us today. You know, I, uh, Leslie, Linda, Paul, and certainly all of my my neighbors and and friends here. I um, had said when I uh, said earlier is that I do believe that our next mayor needs to have three key qualities. She needs to embody the cultures and values of Somerville. She needs to have an inclusive leadership style, and she needs to have the skills and experience to be our next chief executive. And I believe I best demonstrate that. Aging is actually in many ways one of the greatest successes of public health, and we should really celebrate that. And we've talked today about many important issues. We've talked about um, mobility on how to move around here, about affordable housing, um, about um, being able to possibly work or volunteer to be able to socialize and, and feel that uh, you're respected in our community. And I'd like to be able to tackle all of these, these issues because I've been working on the affordability the transportation and mobility issues, um, social equity for nearly my entire adult life. And uh, I believe that Somerville is a place to live, work, raise a family, and age in place. If you share my vision, I ask you for your support and vote on September 14th. Thank you. Thank you. First off, let me thank all of you. I am so proud of Somerville people. Um, I, I, you might not hear me say that every day when we're answering a lot of questionnaires and every other day when we are doing a forum, but that said, um, the commitment of the people in Somerville in their care and concern to make certain the next leader of the city is the right person is remarkable and I feel honored that people care so deeply and have done so much work to understand the issues and to bring forward their concerns. I also feel it is so important to listen and learn. I said I'm a lifelong resident, but I am learning as I've canvassed three wards already, everybody has a wonderful story to tell and has a lot of ideas of what's important in the city. But I will again summarize what I hear most frequently and say why I believe I am the candidate that brings that skill, experience, and vast partnerships to the city of Somerville that on day one, we would have an opportunity to take full advantage of. But as I'm canvassing, first and foremost, as I said, it's affordable housing. I hear from older people that are cash poor and worry about what they can do. I hear from artists who are moving on a regular basis, but they never get to move to a less expensive community. And I will say that I talk to mayors of Everett, Malden, Revere, eight years ago telling them, please do more in affordable housing because Somerville people are being priced out. And while it's late to start, start now. And so affordable housing, and I told them programs, home ownership programs, rental assistance programs, and all of the innovative programs we've done on the affordable housing task force and in the housing office, and as um, uh, Will mentioned, not by name, Ellen Shackner, in housing sustainability, as good as it gets, but we need to put more resources there. Education, I told you it changed my life, and I wanna make certain we have free, universal, free education and free transportation to education because we know it's the most vulnerable families that sometimes could have a slot, but they can't get their child to school. We need to make that um, not a challenge if we want to be fair. I talk a lot about the work I've done in immigrant services for my entire career, but most recently at Cambridge Health Us. Alliance, and we have to continue to fight to make Somerville inclusive and welcoming because of affordability too. Healthcare, mental health and substance use treatment in particular. 
but healthcare equity. I, I have the enviable job of working in all of our communities where I could remind all of my colleagues that 80 to 90% of your health is, is what is happening in your community, what your education is, what your employment is, what are your housing opportunities, and do you have sufficient food? And for each and every one of those social factors of health, I worked and developed programs from when I worked for Jean Broom, even a share a home program for older adults when I was in my 20s and now could use it, um, but also for free um, food markets, delivering food during the pandemic and working with all agencies in Somerville to provide masks, to fill in gaps where there was no PPE in programs like Linda's, pulling together with all the nonprofits agencies. That is an expertise and experience in deep and trusted relationships that I have in the communities and beyond at the federal, state, and local level. And those will be an opportunity for Somerville to build real community in neighborhoods, to build a continuum, and to work regionally like I advise those mayors that I intend to join um, to do together. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm so grateful to be here with all of you. I feel really blessed to be where I am today. Uh, there's a lot of humanity in this community. Just we've uh, mentioned Gene Brun like a hundred times to now. I'm still gonna mention him again. He helped me purchase my first car. This is like, you know, so this is just to bring you back to where I like from my original statement. There's a lot of humanity here, and I'm really blessed for somebody who came from Cameroon, only became a citizen in 2015, has been elected twice on the city council in an all-American city. It's, it's, it's humbling to me. So for me, I'm not running for prestige or power. It's all about giving back. And I can re all the problems we are talking about today, I can relate with those issues personally. You name it, I will tell you. What are you talking about pub public safety? I will tell you that, you know, personally, I can relate with that. I've been racially profiled in this very city. So I know what it means to reimagine public safety. I'll be at the, the front line of that. If you're talking about housing affordability, I've experienced it firsthand. I've moved several times due to rising rent. So these are things that I'm going to tackle head on. You're talking about climate change. I'm, I have a background in science. If you're talking about combating climate change, you can count on somebody who's been you know, endorsed by a national organization called 314 Action Fund. They only endorse members of Congress. But I can all is just to say I'm really humble to be in this space and with all of you. And, and, and I'm not a senior, but I will tell you that I can promise you I don't just say this thing just to please you and that I will not stop until seniors feel fully integrated in our community. That means that they have access to, you know, like high-speed internet, food. You know, they, can, they, are, they are fully independent. They can integrate with our community. That is, that is what I'm committed to. I don't just say it, you know, but I can tell you that my lived experience will enable me to do my job. Hire competent and diverse people and get out of the way and let them do their job. I really hope to get your support on September 14, and I'm very grateful to be here. Thank you so much. I'm very proud to be up here tonight. I want to be your next mayor. I'm going to take care of the seniors. I'm going to take care of our veterans. I'm going to take care of our kids. I'm going to put teen centers across the city. I want to keep everyone, the kids off drugs. I want to keep them occupied, get them jobs. And we keep in the teen center if they don't want to work right away. Go on a teen center. Anything to keep them off drugs. I want to get rid of the existing gangs that have been plaguing our city for the past 15 years. I want to take care of the, the streets, the potholes, the sidewalks, everything. I want to be a mayor for everybody, a mayor for all. I want your vote. I'm asking for your vote, please, on September 14th. My name is William Toro. I'm going to be first on the ballot. You can go to my website, williamtoro.com, and you can read all about me. I want to be a mayor for all. And I also want to be known as the mayor that doesn't need a script to read 
to come before you people and tell. It's all coming from my heart. I don't have to read about it on a pre and script. Thank you. Happy. Thank you. So thank you. That's uh, going to bring an end to our program tonight. I'd just like to um, give some thanks. First of all, thank you to the audience, both here and at home, uh, for being engaged and interested in these issues and for not clapping until we told you to. Um, I want to thank Gina Bozzi for having the thankless task of holding up the yellow and red signs to keep the candidates in line. You know? <laughs> she got to be the unpopular one. <laughs> Um, and um, and I you know especially want to thank the candidates uh, who get I mean I think Leslie said it perfectly you all engaged uh, very directly on the issues and uh, very grateful for that and um, so it's it's William Billy Toro it is Will Mba Mary Casesso and Katiana Ballantyne thank you so much and um, and lastly I just want to thank Linda Cornell this was her brainstorm to do this and. Uh, I, you know, I've, I've known Linda for more than 20 years, and, and she has got so many ideas and is one of the most creative people I know. And we were reflecting on the fact that we've been working uh, with older people for so long, in fact, that we, we like it so much that we decided to become older people ourselves. So, <laughs> so. And um, so uh, let me just tell you that the deadline to register to vote in the preliminary election is Wednesday. August 25th, so as I understand it, I'm sure the candidates will correct me if I'm wrong, but there is a preliminary election which will narrow the field to two candidates and that will be held on Tuesday, September 14th. And then the two finalists uh, will um, be on the ballot on Tuesday, November 2nd. Correct? Very good, okay. Thank you all for coming and thank you all for joining us. <laughs>